Hello, welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at this problem. So we have f of x is a continuous function from the real numbers to the real numbers. It is important that it, uh, it shouldn't work for any complex numbers such that there is uh, such that f of f of x is x. We need to show that there is a certain value let's say x1, such that f of x1 is x1. <clears throat> so first of all, let's begin by looking at a certain theorem that will help us. So, uh, if we look, then uh, let's say this point has an x of <clears throat> some number a, and for the sake of exposition, it's y is negative 1. And for this point, it's x is b, and it's y is 1. And, <coughs> and we know that these two points are in a certain continuous function. Let's, uh, let's say f of x. We want to show that this function, the graph of this function, hits the x-axis. So, uh, let's see, let's start drawing it. Uh, because it's continuous, we <coughs> are able to draw it without leaving the pen. There, there are no jumps. <coughs> so, uh, let's start drawing. Let's <coughs> get down. The, but because b is on the function, it will eventually have to go up and need it. So, <clears throat> let's do an, another one. <clears throat> another <clears throat> maximal and go down again. But now we have to go up to get to B. But how do we do it without crossing the x-axis? <clears throat> well, the <clears throat> answer is we can't. But another important thing to note is that if this function was going from the real numbers to, say, the complex numbers, this would be a three-dimensional plot, and it could go around the x-axis and meet this, this point B. But because we're working only from natural, uh, from real to real, then that means that it can go around the x-axis. Because it's two-dimensional, it will have to hit and cross the x-axis at some point. This is just an example of uh, this uh, sort of graph. And what we get is a certain point that f of x uh, cross the x-axis. And because it hit the x-axis, it means that this, on this point, f of x is zero. Now it doesn't have to be one point, it could be multiple points if it goes like this, but, we know that there must be at least one point where f of x is uh, zero. zero. And why did this work? Well, it's because the value zero, <coughs> the x-axis, was between these negative one and one. We could have also picked, uh, say, y is equal to a half, and it would still work y is equal to negative 0 0.9595 and it would still work. So, <clears throat> what am I saying here? I'm saying here that no matter what, as long as we know these two points are on this continuous function, then there must be a certain x, at least one, between a and b, such that f of that x is equal to any value you choose that's between these two. So that's an intuitive explanation of uh, this theorem involving uh, continuous functions. Now let's get on to actually solving this tricky problem. So, uh, let's see. What we're going to do is uh, make a new function, let's call it g of x. 
So g of x, you will soon see why we define this uh, function to be this way, is f of x minus x. Now, because f of x is continuous, then obviously just removing x will say make it continuous. Uh, I won't do a rigorous proof of it, it's, uh, it is pretty intuitive. Uh, so now, let's see. Let's take a certain value, uh, let's take a certain x that is defined for f. I can say let's pick like uh, something like 0 because it could be the case that <coughs> f of x is goes something like this and it doesn't hit 0, it doesn't hit the y-axis but it's still continuous and it does still uh, hold the property f of f of x is x. So, so we can't just say let's have uh, something like 0 so let's say we're picking a, val a certain value of x let's say x 0 that is defined for f of x. So, uh, g of x0, obviously that is defined because f of x0 is defined, is f of x0 minus x0. That's just by how we set uh, g of x. Now, um, now, let's see what we do when we do g of f of x0. Now, first thing uh, I need to say is who's, who told you that f of x0 is also defined? Maybe it isn't. Well, it has to be defined because if we put in f of, <coughs> f of x0, we get x0, which <coughs> obviously exists, which means we can put it on the plot <coughs> of the function means that yes it is defined for f of x and because we're just subtracting x to get g of x yes it obviously is defined for g of x well not so obviously but yes it is defined for g of x meaning that we can say let's look at g of f of x zero if we look at this we get f of f of x zero minus f of x zero now this, because of, uh, what's, of what's given to us, we know that this is just x0. So this is x0 minus f of x0. Now, uh, what we got is exactly the negative of g of x0. Now let's see why this is important. Uh, first of all, uh, Let's check. So either g of x, g of x zero, is positive, negative, or zero. If it's zero, then we get f of x zero is x zero, and <clears throat> congratulations, we're done. We found a val a certain value f f of x uh, x zero, such that f of x zero is <clears throat> is x zero. But in the case that this is not zero which is most likely the case, uh, we can say that this is positive or negative. <clears throat> and because this is the negative of this, these would have different, <clears throat> I can say, signs. If this is positive, this is negative, this is negative, this is positive. So let's look at the plot of g of x. So for, for the sake of exposition, let's just say f of x0 is bigger than x0. It will obviously work the other way around, the exact same way. So, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. And this is x0. This is f of x0. Now, because f of x is 
of f of x0 is bigger than x0. This means f of x0 minus x0 is positive. So g of x0 is positive. So let's say that this is our point of the graph g of x. But g of f of x0 is the exact negative of this. So if this is positive, this is negative. So we can say that this is negative. Now, because of our theorem that we looked at earlier uh, about continuous functions, to know because it is continuous on this interval, we can say uh, that no matter how we draw the plot of this, we will eventually have to hit the x-axis at a certain point, let's call it x1, and in that point, we have the g of x1, aka f of x1, minus x1 is 0, meaning that we found a point, x, x1, such that f of x1 is x1. And obviously, if x of 0 was bigger than f of x0, this would work the same way, just switching, uh, this, swapping these around. But uh, finally, <clears throat> we got that uh, no matter which case we look at, we get that there is a, va a certain value such that f of <clears throat> x1 is x1, for this value x1. And finally, that's it. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more <clears throat> interesting problems like this in the future. And finally, that's it.